Hi everybody, it's Colin McEwen from the New Fly Fisher. I know a lot of you are looking forward to this week's new premiere about Wind River, a beautiful place in Wyoming. Unfortunately, due to technical issues, we've had to delay the release of that video. In its place, we put two of our top shows from Wind River together into an over an hour package, all about small stream fishing in Wyoming. You're gonna love it, stay with us. Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and in this week's episode, I have the pleasure of bringing you along on my adventure to the beautiful state of Wyoming. I am targeting the world famous Yellowstone cutthroat trout. I might even have the chance to get into some rainbows and some brookies. It's going to be a great technical show, so stay with us. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new fly fisher is supported by Wind River Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, While I have been blessed to fish some of the most incredible locations across Canada, there has always been one fishing destination in the back of my mind. The American West. With unparalleled topography, wildlife, and fishing, it's no wonder I couldn't wait for this trip of a lifetime. During these uncertain times, it's important to travel responsibly and take all necessary precautions whenever possible. This week, I'm on a fishing adventure in the Wind River region of Wyoming exploring the small streams and rivers that cut through the towering mountains and expansive valleys. The Wind River region lays home to some truly incredible fishing opportunities. Whether you're a die-hard stream angler or prefer to explore other bodies of water, such as lakes and reservoirs, this region has it all. For this trip, one of our hosts is Helen Wilson from the Wind River Visitors Council. She set us up with accommodations at Boysen State Park on the Upper Wind River Campground. The Wind River region is home to many similar campsites, perfect for any angler on the road. Once settled into the cabin, I headed to the Lander Fly Shop, located just off 3rd Street in Lander, Wyoming, to meet my guide for the first few days of the trip. Austin Jordan is a knowledgeable guide and passionate angler, and together we came up with a plan for the following day. After a long day of traveling and planning, I settled into my cabin for the night eager for my first day of adventure in the morning. For our first day of fishing, I drove from the cabin to meet Austin at a small nearby river. This long and winding river stretches down from the mountains and provides anglers the opportunity to target brown, rainbow, and cutthroat trout. So 
Austin, can you tell me a little bit about where we're fishing, how we're going to fish it? Um, I really don't have a whole lot of stream fishing experience like this, so any pointers you have for me would be awesome. Yeah, we are fishing a small mountain stream in the Absorcas. Okay. Um, it's cold water, small pools, the trout are going to be near the moving water. Definitely at the back of where the water ends is the deeper pockets, and that's where we're hoping our nymph is going to sink um, and pick fish up off the bottom. Awesome. On this one, I'm going to have you stand in the middle of the river where you have space to throw your back cast okay. and land it in the run of water. Um, Am I going right off the side or right into the riffle? About 10 feet in front of us, just at the back of this pool. And okay. you're casting right off to the left of the stump at the end of the stick that breaches off there. Okay. So that it ends or it runs right through the back of the pocket in the deep water. Oh, I forget how it's so different casting this rod. Positioning is going to be super important because all the trees in your bag cast, you may want to take 10 steps forward. Okay. Austin gave me a few tips for fishing such a tight stream. Mending is super tough to do properly when you're casting straight upstream. So getting like a quartering up angle makes it a lot easier sometimes. Okay. Um, and then it just involves lifting your rod tip up to the point where like you're ready when as soon as you oh. <gasps> as such that's so cool these cutthroat are so wild and squirmy this water is really cold and they're super super healthy So this one here is a little tough. Our shadow's busting, shining right at the pool we want to fish. The water is going to push your fly behind a stump, which will make it hard to retrieve. There's okay. potential for a snag, but great structure for a fish. You're going to want to stand right here. Use this space to cast and land it at the start of the running water okay. so that it drifts back. Okay, I see. Um, and mending this one, it'll sort of tight your line itself, but you're obviously going to want to have keep, that rod, keep the rod tip right up. away. Okay. Right away. Awesome, let's uh, see if I can do this. <laughs> Watch for that uh, foam thing to change sudden direction too. Okay. Another cue to set the hook for sure. There you go. But I was doing that like correctly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've got a snag. Just that rock on the shoreline. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Nice cast. Did the nymph catch on something maybe? Uh, yeah. Deeper than that? That's about it. They, uh, with their vision, if if it's in the pool with them, generally they should be able to see. Oh, I did it! Amazing. Woo! <laughs> oh man, that was. You were right. It was just right in that. Wow. Right in that little pocket. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, what's the best way to take the hook out? Does it just pop out typically? Um, it should. You may have to grab the fish as well. Let's see. Here, buddy. There's the hook. There we go. Just a beautiful baby brown. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Man, that is... That's awesome. That was kind of my first official fish of the day. And it's so much fun just watching them come up. And he came up on the hopper on that one, man. 
Man, this is awesome. Okay, let's go. Nicely done. Thank you. That could be a nice drift. I'll get it a little deeper next. If you can get it back to the shade and really pull it out from there. Okay. Right? Nice. You're on. Whee! Nice. Oh, oh. No, I'm off. So, did I just not set the hook enough that time? Mm-hmm. So, like a harder? Yeah, once you see it in their mouth, you you lightly pulled up a little bit. You need a little bit more of a set. Okay, so and that's a that sentence. shot now, is it? Or another cast worth it? Uh, there's enough water there to hold multiple fish, so maybe his friends want to play. Okay. Did it. Got him. Yeah. Looks like your first Yellowstone cutthroat. Woo! Amazing. Thank you. All right. Sweet. My hands. So is it just uh, kind of under the belly? Yeah, they're so squirmy. One hand strong and then one hand on the lure or the fly. fly. Okay. Oh, they are squirmy. Okay. Should get this out. out. Yeah, there it there is. And, oh man, that is, that's gorgeous. After a few hours on this part of the river, Austin suggested we try fishing another section lower down. As always, it's important to be aware of your surroundings when in the outdoors, and to know what to do should you have a run-in with a wild animal. Get moose! Despite all of my angling experience, fishing tight spaces on tiny streams like this was a whole new ball game for me. Even with Austin's excellent instruction and great tips, things didn't always go as planned. Do you see it? Like, there's no way I could get it out, eh? No, it's hooked. The hopper's hooked right here. This type of fly fishing requires precision, practice, and lots of patience. Someone else broke their line off right here too, see? No. Ah, fudge. Okay, no, that's it. We're done. When fishing a dry dropper, you have to watch your fly at all times. It just happened quick as can be. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh! That was a nice bite, too. That was a nice bite. We're going to try and get him again. Okay. Thankfully, with Austin's guidance, nice cast. Wow. I was able to get into some great trout. Yes. Yeah. Came right out from under the embankment like you, uh, like you said it was going to. That the take is just awesome. Okay. Fishing chubbies is so fun. Hmm? Oh, we're kind of good. You see where the ripples? They're, uh, we should see it again here shortly. Oh, you see that fish? Yeah. So landing it, you definitely don't want to land this line on them. So it's that fine part of landing, you know, you fly like five feet. High. Okay. Oh yeah, wow. They're really just rising there. Yeah. That's One's coming. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Oh. Oh. He knows. Oh, you might have one. 
You see how that motion yeah. really stirred them up? That's what I was talking about earlier. Nice. Woo! Oh, there's so many! Wow! Wow, there's so many there. This looks like your best one yet. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I cannot believe it's so clear and we can see fish just darting around everywhere. Holy smokes, they're following this guy. Let's bring him up here. Whoa. What a nice one. Wow, that is a, wow. Not far enough out. Try sending one to the back of it. In the, yeah. Like that? Yep. Fish. Nicely done. Nice. And he took the nymph. I saw that one. I was not letting that one go. Oh, you said, yes. You said, away from the sticks. There we go, buddy. And whoop. Yes. More to the right? Yeah, but there. Oh. I missed it? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> nice. Got it. Yes. Oh, wow. This feels like a... Better fish? A better fish. Let's go. Looks yeah. like it. It's a beauty. Might be. Oh, might be Take him fish. easy. Yeah, let him... Let him burn himself a little bit. There we go, buddy. Okay, and I'll bring him right up here for you, and... Oh, that is a better fish. Holy smokes! We're getting better. Whoa! <laughs> awesome. Okay, let me see here. Man, oh man. Okay, I'll wet my hands first. I saw one moving in there. There you go. Nice. Oh! Ooh. Nice fish. Oh, wow. Super he nice fish. He hammered that, that chubby Chernobyl. <laughs> wow. That is a nice one. Okay. Nope. Yeah, he wants to go back in his home. Sorry, buddy. We'll uh, we'll bring you back soon. Wow, that is Getting just bigger. wow. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So the uh, the what what was the fly? What did it's you? It's a brown chubby Chernobyl. Okay, and it just it came right out, and the net like na nailed that fly, and I just this is a. Gorgeous cutthroat, holy smokes. And buddy, wow, that is just, that's what you come here for, eh? Yeah, oh yeah, that's what we're looking for all day. Awesome. Best one yet. Wow. Right back into the <laughs> right bank. Right back yeah. under the bank. That's awesome, thanks Austin. Yeah. Man. With such a great first day of learning on the river under my belt, 
I could heartily wait for tomorrow. One of the great things about a trip like this is the opportunity to explore the area and all it has to offer. Wind River Country is located in the heart of Wyoming, in some of the prettiest countryside in the American West. It's nearly 13,000 square miles of wondrous landscapes, dotted with small and welcoming towns. The ultimate destination for those wanting to relax, de-stress, and enjoy the relative solitude and tranquility Wind River offers visitors. From hiking to hunting, this region has it all. For anglers, the myriad of opportunities from small streams to large rivers offers bountiful choices for trout fishing which is why I already plan on coming back next year. For the remainder of my trip, I'm fortunate enough to be hosted and guided by Greg Fischel, owner and operator of the C&E Hunt Club. The C&E Hunt Club is our family ranch that we've had and been blessed with for over 60 years. And now it's my oldest brother, Jeff, and I and we would like to keep it in the family. We have two brand new cabins and then a well house that has a laundry facility. The cabins are um, duplexes. They're fully furnished, uh, full appliances. Uh, everything's ready to go. It's a turnkey deal. Um, they're on our ranch. They're fed by pure artesian spring water fed ponds. With the hunt club, we, uh, promote the fishing in the spring and the summer. This is mostly public fishing and that is a beautiful thing. It's all of the rivers and the streams. You can do what we're doing in the high arid desert. You can go to the mountains and have rivers and creeks and lakes. It's a smorgasbord of public fishing is how I put it. It's incredible what we have here with public lands. For our first day of fishing together, Greg took me to one of his favorite spots in the Wind River region. Despite the low water levels the area had been experiencing this year, Greg was positive we'd be able to get into some active fish. We geared up and began our hike to the river. When water levels are this low, not only is it more difficult to locate active fish, but you have to keep in mind, they will be very easily spooked. Got it. Oh, there you go. Little guy. There we go. Little guy. Woo! But we want to keep him in the wall. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Right here. Oh, look at this little guy. Let's get this fly out. Ooh. And we'll, there you go, guy. We'll go catch his dad. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Which one were they after? Oh, there I you have go. A fish. Nice fish. Good for you. Just yeah. keep that tip tight. Perfect. Good job. Thank you. Good 
Got him. Woo. Okay, so we're using a hopper dropper. And he took the hopper. And I'm just, I wet my hands first. You want to keep the slime on him. Protect them. I'll just pop this out. There we go. Oh, man, this is a beautiful fish. This, this, uh, this is a nice fish. Bring him right up over to you here, if I can. Um, he's right here. Let me see. And oh, head in, head in, head in. There we go. Oh, nice. nice. Oh man. Good job. These cutthroat are just gorgeous. And one thing that I wasn't pre prepared for was how orange their gills are. The gill plate is, wow, oh man. I'm going to, let's see if I can show you this fish here. Oh wow, just beautiful. Whoa. On day three, we headed back to the location we fished yesterday. Today, however, we're joined by a special guest. Greg and I invited Helen Wilson to join us on the water. a really nice deep pocket and I missed the hook set on that first fish because there's a bit of glare and I couldn't see my fly. Got him? Oh okay so I just handed Helen my uh, my rod because the fly popped right out we pinched the barb on that one and this is a gorgeous Yellowstone cutthroat first uh, fish of our day. Wow I just I can never get over the color of these fish. With just a few months of fly fishing under her belt, Helen has already caught the fishing bug. Greg was able to provide her with a bit of a review of the basics, as well as some more specific instruction. Okay, all it is, it's pretend you have a book right here and you're holding your magazine. Okay, it's not the common mistake for every new beginner, fly fisher, me included, is you break your wrist. It's not in your wrist. It's right in this forearm. So it's it's this motion. Pause and see, I barely break my wrist. It's all with this part. It's not this, it's not flipping your wrist. And the more you have it down, the more it loads the line. And so easier to back cast, pause, go forward with it. So it's just straight back to 12 o'clock down to about nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, boom, boom. And you don't need to do a lot of cast. Good job. Good, good, good. Good. Meanwhile, I was off downstream having my own fishing fun. Fish. Yes. Nice. Oh, this is a nice cutthroat. Oh, yeah. Good. 
Oh, this might be a rainbow, actually. It's hard to tell. Oh, no, that's a cut rope. Nice. Oh, yeah, beautiful cutthroat. Oh, okay. Awesome. That was a nice take. I'm going to let him sit in the water here for a second. I'm going to pop off my glasses. I don't have a trochees on them to stop them from falling in the water and I'm just going to wet my hands. So I keep that beautiful protected coating on the fish. Oh, look at that. My fly popped right out. That perk of the barbless hook. And I am going to see about, oh man, this is a nice cutty. Whoo. This is so much fun. And I love how active these fish are. Wow. Just, <laughs> just beautiful. Now let's get this little guy back to his buddies. And oh, he's eager to go. Wow, man. It just doesn't get better than this. I'm having such a good time. I was able to chat with Helen about all the wonderful things the Wind River region has to offer. So Fremont County is very large. It's larger than quite a few states on the East Coast. And um, what I really like about Fremont County is how diverse each of the communities are for both outdoor recreation um, and for the towns. So we have these small towns with quite a bit of space between them. Um, lots of room to roam, as we say. And, you know, you can go from one place where it can be wide open and you've got big open skies to another place with lots of trees and you can go 5,000 feet, 10,000 feet, some at a couple of peaks, find these gorgeous um, hidden rivers, hidden streams. We have reservoirs, we have lakes. Um, it's really a great place for, um, for the outdoors and for just being out there in nature. The fishing was tough today, and even though Helen wasn't able to get into any fish, I know she'll be back on the water very soon. With one more day ahead of me, I could hardly wait to see what tomorrow had in store. For my final day of fishing here in Wind River, Greg suggested that we head out to another river, located a few hours drive from the CNE Ranch. This river is nestled between two towering peaks, the most picturesque location for my last day. While we'd been pretty lucky with the weather this week, the forecast had shifted overnight, and we now faced the threat of showers on and off throughout the day. However, I was not deterred. The potential of hooking into one last Wyoming trout was enough for me to brave almost any condition. Today, Greg and I are joined by new friend and Wind River Council representative, Melanie Heffley. Melanie is brand new to the sport of fly fishing, and I couldn't wait to spend the day with her on the water, teaching and learning with Greg. Despite the blustery conditions, there's nothing like spending time with new friends doing something you love. Lucky for us, after a damp start to the day, the weather cleared for the afternoon bite. Nice. I'm gonna keep tension on the line and I've had some tough fishing today. And uh, the water here has been really low. And uh, oh wow, this is oh, gorgeous cutthroat. Nice, okay, so I'm going to just get this, let this guy sit in the water here for a second. This is a brown. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous brown drone. Holy smokes, and just beautiful, beautiful spots.
Okay, we've got another fish. We have a beaver dam um, right here at the bottom. And I think this is uh, really good for where the fish are feeding because there's a lot of food getting stocked up there. Okay, buddy, let's see here. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. Fly popped right out. And I'm going to show you, man, the colors of these fish. I just, this is, this is a beautiful, beautiful trout. That was another beautiful fish here in Fremont County, Wyoming. I have had such an incredible time here. This is such a beautiful part of the U.S. and I feel so fortunate to have gotten to stay at Sini Hunt Club and visit all of these amazing fishing spots. If you'd like to learn more about fishing here in Fremont County or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we're in Wind River Country, just outside the town of Lander in the heart of Wyoming. We're on the make for big high mountain brown trout, and of course, the rainbows that this region is so famous for. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Wind River Visitors Council, Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boat Works, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. The West is full of quirky mountain towns that are well known by outdoor lovers like Jackson Hole, Boulder, and Missoula. But there are plenty more that are lesser known and have loads of charm and have outstanding fishing within a very short distance of town. Lander, Wyoming is one such town. There's a vibrant energy in this community with funky shops and art galleries locally owned restaurants, and old school watering holes. Lander's accessible from a wonderful regional airport out of Riverton, but if you like to drive, you can also access it from Casper and Jackson Hole. Our outdoor adventure begins here. This week, I'm fishing on a budget. I go on a do-it-yourself trout fishing trip close to Lander. I'll visit three trout streams, the closest being five minutes from town, and the furthest just under an hour away. In preparation for this trip, I enlisted the services of Sweetwater Fishing Guide Service owner George Hunker to show me where to go and what flies he recommends. Hiring a local guide is always the best way to explore new water, especially if you're only there for a short period of time. Not just five minutes outside of Lander, Wyoming, in Wind River country, um, you've got ample opportunity for numerous streams to catch trout. This happens to be one of those streams exactly. It's a small stream just outside of town, um, and the water's low and the water's clear. So stealth and, and cunning are truly important today. We're gonna work our way up. We're gonna boulder hop and we're gonna hit all these little pockets. I've got a stimulator um, and uh, 18 inches of, of um, uh, line to a uh, Pertagon dropper. We're gonna see what we can do today. One of the keys to fishing this kind of stream, this bouldery pockety water is to, um, is to not have any fly line out. Always uh, have as much fly line in your rod as you can, high stick, keep that fly line off. These fish are super spooky. Anything that they see will put them down. So your tippet and your leader are really the only thing that should be touching the water. Nice. Right down the middle, right down the middle of the chute. Nice little, nice, nice trout. Took the rainbow, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
tiny little trout, so fun. That's what you're here for. You have a chance of catching a big one. You really do. The barbless hook. Gorgeous little fat little dude. That is one fat little trout. Look at that. Just a perfect, perfect specimen. Just amazing. That's what it's all about here. It's all about the wild. It's all about the seclusion. It's all about catching amazing, amazing specimens of brown trout, rainbow trout, just outside of Lander. I mean, this is public water and it's five minutes from town. Amazing. better fish here. A little bit of a rodeo took me down into the next pool down, but that's okay. It's like a brown trout. No, it's a rainbow. Look at the color on this dude. Ate the Pertagon. Let's get him into some quiet water here. That's better. Awesome little rainbow. Barbless hook just pops out. Dark fish. Wild. Just amazing. Just amazing. So don't give up on a pool. If you roll through it a couple times, you don't pick anything up. They're there and they'll eat. One of the things that I've noticed when fishing these plunge pools is that the two bigger fish that we've hooked have come at the actual tail right here of the pool where the water plunges down into the other. Um, that's generally, you know, where a lot of the big fish will hang out because that's where the food gets funneled. So they're big enough and strong enough to be able to stand the current, but they'll sit there waiting to pick off nymphs or hoppers or anything that comes down through the chute. So um, that we lost a good one come from a tail. That last fish came from a tail. I think we're starting to develop a pattern. I'm going to start fishing all the way out of the pool and see if we can pick up some more. When fishing DIY out of Lander, Wyoming, don't be afraid to go into a fly shop, buy some flies and ask the right questions. Where to go, what trails to use, what streams to fish, they will help you out. We're going to take a walk about a half an hour away from all the crowds so that we're all by ourselves and get into some brown trout and some rainbows. So this fish came up and ate the dry. So I moved and I switched to the bottom of the pool, let it rest for about 30 seconds, then drifted it back through and this time he ate the nymph. Now these are barbless hooks and these are crazy rocks. So watch your step. That's fun. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous little rainbow. Just a fantastic fish, ate the nymph. I mean, look at this, it's paradise. It's absolutely gorgeous. The fish play, they're hungry. Tiny little barbless nymph. Pops right out. We're gonna let him go right in this little back eddy. There you go, absolutely perfect. So. The reason why I caught that fish is because I actually raised it on a parachute atoms and I missed it. So I moved down to the lower part of the pool and I fished that for a little while, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And I came back up and I did the exact same drift. On that drift, the fish didn't eat the atoms, it ate the pertagon, it ate the nymph. So rest it, come back and fish it again and there's a good chance that fish was interested in the beginning and it'll come back and eat again. We 
go. Same situation. Fish came up to eat it. I missed it. Threw, threw in another cast. And the fish came around and ate it. And this is a spectacular, gorgeous little brown trout. Oh my gosh, if you could have painted one yourself, it would not be this beautiful. Wow. Oh, that is absolutely amazing. What a gorgeous little fish. I'm here to tell you that I honestly think that that was the most beautiful little brown trout I have ever seen. Whoa, just incredible. What a gorgeous little fish. I love this game. The base of a waterfall is generally a pretty difficult spot to fish. Uh, not only do you have the prevailing wind from the valley, but you also have the wind from the actual waterfall. So you have to make a decision in your fishing. Either you high stick it and you risk the wind wreaking havoc with your leader and blowing your natural presentation all over the place, or you place your fly in and you keep your leader down low on the water trying to keep your fly line out. It's one of those situations where it's the devil you love. You either have to do one where you, where you lose the ability to control your dry fly, or two, you have your leader on the water such that it might spook the fish. But either way, you got to do something in order to catch them. Right at the base of this waterfall, we're able to see some fish milling around. And, uh, whoa, airtime. This little rainbow came in and ate this pergon. Just outside of town, you have ample opportunity to catch all kinds of great little fish. And the further out you get from Lander, the bigger they get. Little pergon in the corner of the mouth. I've had an absolutely fantastic day today catching these amazing Wyoming jewels. It's just super fun. All right, that guy's gone. Put the fly in my thumb. That's okay. Show you the rig we've got here. We've got about six foot of 3X leader tied to a 4X tippet. To that, we have a parachute Adams. And then on the dropper, We've got a tungsten head Pertagon in orange. It's barbless, with tiny little tail, jig head style. It's putting on a clinic on these little rainbows and brown trout today. Most visitors come to Lander, Wyoming to experience the great outdoors, specifically the Wind River Range, a section of the Rocky Mountains that has a peak of over 13,000 feet. It has more than 600 miles of trails for hiking and is the longest range in the state. The surrounding landscapes are home to countless creatures, including grizzly bears, mountain lions, and moose. What an absolutely beautiful morning. We're about 10 minutes south of the town of Lander here in Wind River Country, Wyoming, on this great little high mountain stream. We're at about 7,500 feet elevation, and we're on the search this morning for browns and rainbows. I'm gonna start with a dry fly with a Pertigan uh, nymph underneath uh, and see what happens on the day. It's first thing in the morning, the sun is high, it is um, getting warmer, and uh, today should be a fantastic day. Here we go. Whitefish. 
Now, I'm not concerned about catching a whitefish here out of this pool right away. Because if you're catching whitefish, that's where the trout live, right? They often cohabitate together. And now I can get this guy out of the system and focus on catching brown trout. Still fun on fly. All right, little rainbow. Right at the tail of this little pool. Whoa! Little water walker. <laughs> Took the nymph right away. Right at the tail. Now these are barbless, so you need to keep tight with them all the time. The water's freezing cold. It got down to about 39 degrees last night, just above freezing. There you go. Great fish to start the day. Okay, there we go. He's gone. This stream is much more wide open than the stream yesterday, making stealth even more important. The stream yesterday had mostly plunge pools that were very noisy. This noise allows you to get closer to the fish. Today, however, we have slower moving water with little sound. I have to make sure I don't make any noise or get too close. Fish have excellent hearing and sight. Notice I stay far back and cast to my target. There he is. All right. So this one took the nymph. I think this is the fish that came up and tried to eat the dry. Missed it. And then a couple casts later came back and ate the nymph. Nice fish. So the adage does bear true, you know, you can catch all kinds of fish in lander and around lander. Some of them may be smaller, but the further you get out of town, the bigger the fish get. And this guy, that Pertagon fell out. He's a great rainbow trout. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> Perfecto. All right, so here's the flat I'm using. It's a, uh, it's a George Hunker Special. It's a tungsten bead-headed nymph, Pertigan nymph, uh, with a red collar. Looks like it's got some copper um, or brownish uh, thread around the shank of the hook. Uh, barbless, and uh, so far, it's doing fantastic. The equipment used in this episode are nine foot four weights and nine foot five weight rods and reels. Softer rods such as medium bend are better suited for small streams. There's no need for long casts. The reels can be click and pull. No need for heavy duty drag systems as the reel is there mostly as a line holder. The majority of fish are brought in by stripping the line. Another little guy, right on the drop. Little brown trout, nice. Rainbows and browns. There we go. Oh, that's a great looking brown trout, man. Again, ate the nymph. All right, let's get this little dude unbuttoned. That fly just falls out, he's gone. Now, in talking with local guide George Hunker here, who, uh, fishes out of Lander. Um, he's the one that turned me on to this little river. And uh, he said that you catch a lot of little fish, which is great fun on dries and, and with the dry dropper. He said, but you do have a chance of catching a big one, like a 20 inch brown trout or a 20 inch rainbow. That's what we're hoping for today. But if it doesn't come to fruition, it doesn't come to fruition, we're still having a blast. to be lucky than good. I was just moving up into the pool and uh, I guess I moved my rod tip a little bit and this brown trout came and ate the nymph. 
Little deeper fish, best fish of the day. I did not catch this fish, this fish caught itself, to be completely honest with you. I was moving to fix to try to make my next cast and this little dude, this nice fish, for a small stream came and ate this nymph. And I'm here to tell you that this is the kind of fish that they make stickers out of, for sure. Are you kidding me? <laughs> all right, this makes it worth it. All the small fish you plow through, which are so fun to tie lock horns and be able to catch and release one of these brown trout. Let's take a look at this guy. How do you like that? Gorgeous brown trout and high mountain streams just outside of Lander, Wyoming. On a do it yourself. Just perfect. All right, let's let this guy go. Another little rainbow. On the inside seam of that rock. What fun, what absolute fun on a Sunday in Lander, Wyoming. Not a soul to be seen and tons of fish to be caught. Put that down. Oh, they're just so strong, nothing but power. It's just after lunch, <clears throat> the clouds have rolled in. Things are starting to cool off. The front is coming this way and the temperature has dropped. So I'm gonna put on Warm up a bit. We're going to continue fishing up this fantastic little creek. See if we can't get another big brown trout or two. It's a rainbow, it's a big one. It's a big brown trout. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. So we've been fishing this big pool a little while and um, I lobbed one up into the, into, the, into the still water and I gave this, and I gave it a twitch back. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Look at this thing. This is absolutely radiant. I gave it a twitch back under the indicator and it danced that nymph just a little bit. Dance, dance, dance like this and this big boy came up and ate it. Yes. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic fish. Look at the colors on this thing. It's late September, and I got one idea of what this big male's about thinking to do. All right, well the fly just fell out. Let this guy get back to his business. So, when you have confidence that there's a big fish in a pool, try something different. Just like that, what I was doing was I was letting that nymph settle under the indicator, giving that nymph line a little bit of a wiggle, which moved the indicator, which in turn rose up that nymph to make it look like it was emerging and that fish ate it. It was fixing to spawn, beautiful colors. Put your time in here in Lander. There are little ones, but you have the chance to dance with a giant. Fish. What is it? Oh, it's another brown trout. Awesome. Same technique. Had that in the dead water, just lightly jiggling that indicator, and it was enough to get this fish to eat. Make life easy on me too. <laughs> well, what do you what you don't know when you don't figure it out, right? All of a sudden you try something a little different, and that's two fish on two casts that are just great, great brown trout specimens. Super cool.
So let me show you the technique that I stumbled upon in catching those last two fantastic brown trout. What I did was I roll cast out into the pool and uh, let the nymphs settle underneath the indicator, just like that, okay? Once they've settled, or I believe they've settled, all I'm doing is giving the tip of my rod an S-shaped S wiggle. It's moving the indicator, which in turn is moving the nymphs on, underneath, and it drove those trout crazy enough that they just had to eat it. Change things up. If you're not getting bit and you think that there's a fish in the pool, make some changes and maybe you'll just find success. Just about an hour's drive outside of Lander finds you in this fantastic river, canyon upstream, and this place is known for big brown trout and also big rainbows. The further you go out of town, it seems the bigger the fish get, though you can catch them big in Lander proper. We're gonna head upstream looking for big rainbows, big browns, under an indicator, maybe some dry fly, and maybe even some streamers, strip some streamers in some of these deeper pools. Today should be a fantastic day. There we go. Right where he should have been. We've got this great big huge pool here, and I've been fishing my way up, and uh, got to the head of it, where I figure it's probably pretty deep and there's probably some good fish up there. And this little guy ate it. Ate the dropper, ate the nymph. Nice little rainbow. Ate the red pertagon. Beautiful fish. Fish. Oh. So we threw some streamers through here, didn't move anything, and then uh, got this nice rainbow to come and eat, eat the nymph. But you know what? You know, people knock nymphing and they say the nymphing is not exciting, but when you see that atoms go down, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, it's just like dry fly fishing. Woo! Leaper. Oh, what a great fish. There we go. Can you beat it? I don't think you can beat this at all. Wild trout in Wyoming, it's absolutely stunning. They are jumpy. Fourteen, fifteen inch fish. All right, let's take a look at the fly that caught that nice rainbow. This is a, a pertigum pattern tied by George Hunker, George Hunker special. It's got a, um, a heavy, heavy bead head. It's a jig style fly nymph uh, with an orange throat and some um, gold and red ribbing uh, with a tiny little tail. Uh, if you notice the hook um, on these pertigums, they actually are made barbless. They're not pinched down. Um, so when you're fighting these fish, you really have to keep that in mind that you don't allow them any slack. You'll see that on that last fish, I actually bowed to it, I'm like fishing a tarpon, um, to keep things tight, um, allow it to jump away from me so there isn't, it didn't throw any slack in it. Um, and it was able, able to land these fish. So these, these flies though, if, it takes a little bit to get used to fishing a purely barbless hook, but once you get it down, um, you'll see some great success and these pertigum patterns are absolutely fantastic.
we go. Good, good fish. Right against that rock ledge. What a fantastic spot. I had a small one come out and chase this nymph as I was pulling in and uh, decided I'd throw it right back in there. And this great rainbow came and ate it. Get out of those rocks, bud. Come on now. Right in. Oh my gosh, you should see how red this fish is, how big its eyes are, and just how fantastic these rainbows are. Look at that. Absolutely moving. What a great fish. Look how red its cheek is, that stripe down its lateral line. Just beautiful. And you can let him go. Oh, what a fantastic fish. Now, when you come to this region and you do it yourself, there's no harm in going exploring. Get out of your comfort zone, go for a walk. There's nobody here. We haven't seen anybody in days. These fish are unpressured and they're here waiting for you. Gosh, he came right between those rocks. Oh, what a fish. Right between the rocks. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's a brown trout. Beautiful. Oh. Up in the high country, fishing dries and droppers for wonderful, wonderful wild fish. This Pertagon happened to just accidentally float right between two rocks and this brown was sitting there he actually came up on the rock and ate it i watched them eat it at about six inches of water oh what a thrill short fat ball of fun <laughs> do it yourself people it's well worth it talk to the guides talk to the locals buy some flies they'll help you this is possible, you can do this. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's absolutely great. Listen, I wanna thank everybody at Wind River Country and uh, all my friends here in the area for helping us out. Um, it's been an absolute thrill, an absolute thrill. I picked up the phone, I called, called George Hunker. He told me where to go, he told me what to use. He was a very, very, very amazing distant guide. Uh, this place is absolutely incredible. So thank you. For all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, I want to thank you for watching. Remember, adventure is out there. What better way than to go and find it with a fly rod in your hand? From everybody at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. My name's Mark Melnick, and hopefully we'll see you in the West with one of these bad boys. <laughs>